Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Did you miss me? Nah, oh, I missed you too. Today, we're gonna play a game that I've been very excited about, but haven't had the opportunity to play up until now. For those of you who are more familiar with the channel, I did play this game relatively close to when it released, but, uh, well. Yeah, I see ya. Uh oh. <laughs> I knew it! I knew it would happen! So, yeah. I built a new computer with the generosity of the community, and would you look at that? Next gen graphics, maximum settings, 60 FPS minimums. But hey, it wouldn't be a backlogs video if I wasn't several months behind the rest of the internet. So, without further ado, can you beat Dead Space 2023 with only a flamethrower? Now, some of you who are unfamiliar with the series may be wondering, Lemon, didn't we do this already? And technically, you're correct, we did. But this remake is not a remaster. They remade large portions of the game, changed all sorts of mechanics, and basically remade the game from the ground up. Dang, Chen, mean mugging me in 1080p now, huh? But can I just say, I love what they've done with the place. Seriously, this game is beautiful in that awful, slowly rotting spaceship kind of way. And the changes in gameplay, story, and quality of life mechanics are absolutely fantastic as well. But no time to gush. We've got a game to beat. Oh, look, someone spilled their coffee. And, uh, blood. Do you want ants? Because that's how this office gets ants. Hey, Chen, I know this sounds crazy, but something's about to kill you. You're gonna have to trust me on this one, but it comes out of the vents. Get ready. Whew. I knew my ability to see into the future would come in handy. Oh no, Chen! Oh god. Oh god, it's happening all over again. Why does this keep happening to me? Ah! Uh, ele elevator's full. Wait for the next one? Please? Well, I did say please. Well, so much for knowing how this game is going to go. If you thought beating Dead Space 1 multiple times would help, think again. Don't get me wrong, there's plenty of similarities between this game and the original. But certainly not enough to help me with this challenge run. What the? Ugh, come on, Mark. That's inappropriate for the workplace. I'm gonna have to report this to HR. But, with Mark avoided for now, I make my way to the tram control room, where I get voluntold to get the tram system working. Well, sort of. Hammond, Daniels, and Isaac actually have some good chemistry this time around. Almost as if they're a team, and not just a way for the game to give you your next objective. Huh, how about that? You know what, Hammond? I will go fix the tram cars. Teamwork makes the dream work, after all. Oh, look, my stasis module. Ew, well, a bit more second hand than I'd like. Too soon? Poorly timed puns aside, let's get this tram working again. I remember this room. Just launch the claws, use stasis to keep them in place long enough to hit the button, and you're home free. I mean, yeah, there's a few hiccups between the start and the finish, but teamwork makes the dream work. And so long as I stand next to the stasis machine, I've got unlimited stasis, which means the chances of getting killed are much lower. Oh, thank God. My stasis finger was getting tired. Now, if you could just unlock the door. Un unlock the door? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. Would any of you happen to have the key? Oh, God, not the face. So, fun fact, that room is impossible to leave unless you kill every single enemy inside it. And you know what that means. All right. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this, but it looks like we need to use the same caveats as the original game. Until we get the Kinesis module, melee will have to be allowed. And once I get the Kinesis module, that's all we can use until we get the flamethrower. Shame that the run can't be completed perfectly, but it is what it is. And I'd rather see how this plays out than stop now. So, with that room cleared, it's time to- Oh, for the- Alright, who unleashed gerbils into the vents? Honestly, this office gets worse and worse by the day. I dodge my way around Mark, mumble some excuses about why I can't go to the office birthday party later today, narrowly dodge having an awkward elevator conversation, then juke past Mark for a third time and get back to the tram control room, where I can finally fix the trams and get this show on the road. Dream work makes the team work! After that, it's just a quick jaunt back to the Kellyan spaceship where our new co pilot Johnston is waiting. What have you got on you? Is that blood? And ants. Alright, just need to get the ship repaired and. What is it, Johnston? Oh. Yeah, we should probably run. Um, Haley, that's not how you fix a singularity core. Or maybe it is. It's been a hot minute since I've used my space engineering degree. <laughs> okay, definitely not the right tool for the job. Maybe if we. Okay, new plan. Find the captain's rig and access the ship's command computer. Sounds easy enough. Oh, hey, a store. Time to put all that space capitalism to work. 
I sell all my useless ammunition, then decided to splurge a bit and get myself some tier 2 armor. Better armor means better health and inventory space, both of which we'll need if we're- Oh wow, that's incredibly loud. But yeah, better armor means better stats in general, and also gives us some more upgrade nodes when it comes to our suit. But more on that later. Because would you look what I found? The Kinesis Module, my old friend. Turns out, Dead Space 2023's Kinesis Module is a wonderful mix of Dead Space 1 and 2. It's not broken and overpowered like it was in 2, but it's also not complete garbage like it was in 1. Rather, it's somewhere in the middle. Because while it does do awful damage with everyday objects, Dead Space 2023 purposely puts sharp objects around the maps now, reintroduces the concept of throwing sharp limbs from dead enemies at the slightly more alive ones, and even lets you upgrade your Kinesis module's damage and reach if you put enough nodes into your suit. Not that we will, my flamethrower is going to need every node I could find, but hey, the option is there. Huh, the heck is this thing? A stapler? Eh, nah, probably a stapler. Oh hey, look! It's me trying to come up with new challenge runs. <laughs> Moving on. I make my way around the ship, throwing a multitude of vent pieces at enemies when I can find them, and literally anything else when I can't, briefly consider upping my kinesis damage before realizing I don't have a good enough suit for that yet, then continue on my way through the office, delivering coffee like the good intern I am. Here you go Pam, one latte, extra cart. Ooh, the flying in this game got improved. We're talking full control. No more of that aim and launch crap we had to deal with back in 2008. I deliver the rest of the coffees that I brought for my coworkers, then scoot my glutes as fast as I can down to Hammond. Oh, uh, sorry, guess you'll have to catch the, um, next door? In a bit of Dead Space weirdness, it turns out that bodies are actually the best thing to throw at enemies. Is it just me, or is that true of every game with telekinesis? Eh, it must be a physics thing, I don't know. What I do know is that so long as I've got my good friend Cuerpo by my side, there's nothing I can't handle. The only problem is that Cuerpo is a little hard to see sometimes with all the lights turned off. Cuerpo? Cuerpo, where are you? Honestly, of all the days to wear black on black. Oh, fine, be that way. I'll just do things the old-fashioned way. And after clearing out all the necromorphs in the area, I find myself a shock pad. Hey, you! Well done. Then, using my knowledge gained from the Firebomb Academy, I do what comes natural. This is the way. And after a little more capitalism, I finally find Nicole. Well, sort of. This is actually the start of one of several side quests that the game now offers. Doing them will net you a bunch of new lore, as well as several items and potentially even upgrades for your troubles. But we didn't come here for lore, we came here to burn away everything and anything that moves. A task I am very much failing at the moment. What the- Oh god, I remember this room. Nope, not this time, Dead Space. I remember what happens here. Let me just pile these up here, then open this door and quickly grab the captain's rig. Oh, wait. It's a cutscene now. Huh. Okay. Um, guess I'll just take this then. That's kind of strange. In the original, you had to fight off an entire horde of necros because of- Ah, space pigeon! Oh, good. Cuerpo's back. Just in the nick of time. And after an intense game of Ring Around the Rosie, I finally managed to kill all the necromorphs with, um, more necromorphs. Look, I don't know, man. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Whew. First try. But definitely just as hard as I remember. Isaac, what's your status? Have the captain's rig. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much sums it up. A little more capitalism, a little more zip zap zoopin', and before you know it, we're in the control room. Oh, for the love of Pete, why is everything in this ship broken? And who left this miter saw lying around? Honestly, what kind of operation are you guys running here? I'm starting to wonder if getting a degree in space engineering was the wrong choice after all. Maybe I should have been a firefighter like Dad wanted. Lights, life support. Lights, life support. You know, you'd think this would be an easy choice. Oh god, I should have turned off life support! I make my way through decontamination, coffee and carts in tow, which I faithfully deliver, do some space engineering nonsense that requires a master's degree to understand, no, it's not just a single button press, shut up, then make my way to- Oh no! Oh no! I can't kinesis grab anything during this section- Ugh. Man, this game really doesn't want me to win this challenge run. Speaking of, where is my flamethrower dead space? Honestly, it was in chapter 2 in the original, how am I almost 3 chapters deep and still missing my weapon of choice? Oh, it's right here. Ask and ye shall receive, I suppose. Wait a minute, I don't remember giving corporate permission to use my likeness. That is a pretty good poster of me, though. But in any case, we can finally, finally start the run. Ugh, God's teeth. And would you look at what I found in the next room? A workbench. Let me just put these in here. There we go. And let's see what we're working with. Oh yeah, that'll do. Now, it's not perfect. It still takes about 13 bits of fuel to down a regular necromorph. 
but it's far better than what we were working with. And considering it can keep enemies like the Burster here from, you know, bursting, I'd call it a win. Oh, it also automatically flings out the loot that an enemy would have dropped when you curb stomped them too, which makes the speedrunner in my brain very happy. Now, I did run into the issue of having a full inventory when I initially picked up the flamethrower, and because of that, the game didn't want to drop me any fuel tanks. But when there's a will, there's a way. And after clearing out the break room, it was just a simple matter of invoking my right to capitalism before my ammunition problems were solved. Ooh, what's this? A flamethrower upgrade, huh? Don't mind if I do. Now we just get some ammunition, and a few power nodes, and there we go. Right, time to find Hammond and figure out this whole asteroid met Jesus wept! Whew, Hammond, you wouldn't believe what just hap- Hey, whoa, watch where you're pointing that thing. You know I like to take my helmet off at inappropriate moments. Oh, hey, would you look at that? It's Chen, and he's still mean-mugging me. You know, this may sound like a bad idea, but what if we kept him here on the- No, that's fine, we can just ignore my precog abilities, you know, whatever. In any case, I upgrade my security clearance, then get the side quest where I need to find all the higher clearance officer's rigs all around the ship. And while I don't care about the lore at the moment, I do care about the fact that two of the doors I'll need to open later for flamethrower upgrades require some pretty heavy security clearance. Guess we're going hunting. Might as well test out our new clear- Oh. You know, I thought this room looked familiar. Hi, Paul. Can I interest you in some smoked jerky? No? Alright, well, slow down for a second. You might be interested in my special rump roast. No? You sure? Your loss. It's cooked on an open flame and everything. Okay, I'll stop. But yeah, the flamethrower's secondary fire is a firewall now. Works pretty good, though it eats through ammunition like nobody's business. But with the brute necromorph taken care of, we can finally access another workbench. Which means it's time for more nodes. You get a node, and you get a node. Everybody gets a node! Ooh, what's this? Firewalls last longer now, you say? <laughs> well, don't mind if I do. Pretty cool that the weapons get whole new buffs from power nodes. It almost makes up for the fact that my flamethrower, despite its original description stating otherwise, STILL CAN'T SHOOT IN SPACE! But there is one silver lining. I just found my second favorite weapon in the entire game. And while we won't be using it this go around, if there was ever a gun that I would go through New Game Plus with, it's this one right here. Anywho, let's test out that new firewall ability, huh? Yep, Seems to be working. Unfortunately, the damage is still a little low, so it's not exactly a solve-all solution. But it does help keep larger groups at bay. But for now, I think I'll just stick with the tried and true method of spraying and praying. What the, the heck is this room? Oh, I've heard about this. Apparently this room was added just to show how horrifying game development is. Truly, there is no greater plague upon the mind of man than video game crunch time. But enough of that. I roast up some more brutes. Then, after making sure the room is fully clear, decided to play around with my secondary weapon a bit before I inevitably throw it in my storage locker. Yeah! Unleash the base cannon! <sighs> in another life. Well, back to work. I reroute a bunch of power to the asteroid defense cannons. Then... Ah, crap. Hold up, I gotta get my tea. I'll be right back. Alright, sippy break time. <laughs> oh, jeez, come on, man, it's in the keyboard! Right, time for the infamous asteroid minigame. Except Dead Space actually has a neat surprise for us. Rather than getting behind the wheel of a giant turret with terrible controls, the game just lets us aim like normal, with the aforementioned turret shooting instead of us. And while I can't deal with the enemies that currently surround me, since I don't have a weapon that works in space, I can actually float around while shooting. This here? This is good, player-friendly game design. I like this. Oh, and I found an officer rig. One down, only a bunch more to go. All right, look, I wasn't really paying attention when they told me to find him. Look, I just want to burn things. All right, chapter five. We're making some heavy progress. What did I just step on? Ew, wait, 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 wait. Oh, hey, suit level three is available for a limited time only. I know we don't really need the extra space or the extra health. I mean, not really. But hey, you only live once, and we might as well take advantage of the coupon I found in- Oh wow, this one's even louder. But with new suit equipped, it's time to go to medical. And all the doors just locked. You'll be safe here. I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah, heard that one before. Next thing I knew I was missing four wisdom teeth and my spleen. Can I just say how much I love that the baby morphs become wacky wavy inflatable arm flailing tube men when they burn? Oh, I also like that I only have to use about 10 ammo on enemies, but more often than not, they drop 25 on death. The gift that just keeps on giving. Oh crap, it's the bane of my existence. These things were impossible to kill with the original flamethrower run. I can only imagine the pain I'm gonna have to endure on the remake. And he's dead. I solved some puzzles. 
Found out that my girlfriend was actually a malfunctioning hologram. Stupid chat GBT never works right. Talked to the good doctor about my ever-increasing carpal tunnel. Probably should have asked him why he had that nail gun, actually. Then break out of my stupor just in time to be torn to bits by the regenerator. So, good news, bad news. The good news is that the game does register that I'm doing damage to it this time around. Which means if the only trigger to open a door is to do a specific amount of damage to our boy here, we'll be able to keep going. The bad news is that the damage doesn't actually injure the regenerator at all. So we're constantly playing keep away from a fully limbed, fully dangerous murder boy. But at least he's pretty slow. And if there's one thing I know about dead space enemies, is that they can't open door. Well, shit. Well, okay, at least I'm still faster than he is. Oh god, not the face! Whew. Okay, finally found the story door. He can't make it through that one. Thanks for the save, Daniels. Alright, so I guess we just... What? Poison gas? Already? Not even close to food storage. Well, at least the flamethrower works in here. Not exactly sure why, considering it doesn't work in space, but hey, consistency is overrated. Let's see, liquid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen. Ah, there we are. Now we just need to, oh God, not you again. Uh, sit, stay, cryo freeze in progress. Good boy. And with that taken care of, it's time for Pang. Everybody wants Pang. Uh, I, I mean food storage. It's time for food storage. I build myself an enzyme, which I am told repeatedly not to ingest by the computer, then get a video call from an actual survivor. That's actually really nice. I mean, yeah, she's a bit weird and decided to show me her quasi-dead team on our first video chat, but hey, at least she's not actively trying to stab me. You know the drill from here. Spray and pray whenever necessary, give the Weezers their asthma medication. Uh, I Isaac, I don't think that's how you're supposed to give that. Then repeat ad nauseum. Oh, and be careful of the splody boys. They could be a real pain if they get too close. But hey, firebombs and firebomb accessories, am I right? More puzzle solving, more brute slaying, more asthma medication deliveries. And after an entirely too long section, we can finally... Wait. Oh god, is that a tentacle nest? Huh, okay. No one's home. Man, that really got my heart pumping for a second. Oh god, please, no, not again, I have a family... <gasps> well, I really can't see what the hell I'm doing, but if I've learned one thing from this run, it's that the best solution to all of life's problems is to spray and pray. Sp sp spray and pray? Spray and pray? Oh, thank god. This is for ruining my run! <sighs> anyway. I make my way back to food storage, and release the Kraken. Yeah, we both knew it wasn't going to be that easy. Time to try to use a flamethrower in a long-range battle. The Leviathan has a 10 kiloton mass. Do you really need me to tell you this is a bad idea? Well, I'm all out of good ideas, so guess what's left? A uh, better idea? Alrighty, let's see what we're up against here. Oops, excuse me, Harold. Didn't see you there. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're gonna die. So, let's assess the situation. Giant tentacles reach out to grab you, but if we dodge past them, we can aim for the glowing weak spot and... All right, so that's a no-go. Gonna have to think of something else. It looks like there's several explosives around the room, but the boss likes to break them before I can use them, so we've got a very limited supply. Does seem to be doing damage, though. And while I was able to injure two of the tentacles, I didn't have enough explosives for the third, which means it's Harold's time to shine. Only problem is that Harold gets a bit nervous when the pressure's high, and the damn Leviathan isn't making things easy either. It took about five to ten minutes of convincing, but eventually Harold worked up enough courage to do his job. And with that, we're now entering phase two. This phase is much easier, mainly because the Leviathan gives me all the ammunition I need. And after a few short rounds, we knock the Leviathan into phase three. Huh, okay, I don't remember this. Looks like we've got a minute and a half to kill this thing before we suffocate. No pressure. Thankfully, it's just phase two again, but with a time crunch. And while it got a little spicy towards the end there, I was able to kill the Leviathan and push it out into space with a little less than 20 seconds to spare. Not even close. And with the poison gas crisis solved, it's time to work on getting a distress beacon launched. Turns out the miners here made a last stand and set up traps all over the place. Really nice touch that they wrote the warnings about them on the walls. You know, because the necromorphs don't read. Just a cool little detail, thought it was clever. The traps themselves seem to work plenty fine, Though, if you put any object in the beams, the mines will overload and just fizzle out. There's also this trap here. Not quite sure what it does, but its movements are... hypnotic. I make my way through the mining deck, taking the time to clean up everyone else's mess, find even more officer rigs, make my way across a very gooey tunnel on the world's slowest tram ride, then find Nicole. For realsy this time. Or do I? You know, I always thought it was kind of weird how we have to play protector for Nicole, even though she's obviously dead. Oh please, the game came out in 2008, you already knew this. That said, Dead Space 2023 actually came up with a reason. And you know what? I like it. But I'm not going to spoil that for you today. I've never seen you at work. 
You're a surgeon with that thing. Lady, you may be a senior medical officer, but if the surgeons you're hanging out with are using flamethrowers, you may want to report that to somebody. Anywho, I find myself a level 4 suit. You know, this might just be the blood force trauma talking, but this is actually pretty soothing. Unsuccessfully attempt to launch a distress beacon, then decide that attaching the beacon to an asteroid is a better option, and begin breaking gravity tethers. Only to realize that I can't break the ones that are out in space. But, uh, apparently the enemies currently swarming around me can. So hey, that works. All right, Lemon, this is crucial and delicate work. It's gonna take all six years of training we received at engineering school, but if we're careful, we might just be able to pull this off. Nailed it. And launch asteroid. There we are. That wasn't so bad. Now we can broadcast our distress signal, and why have the door stop working? Oh, for the love of- You again! Oh, by Fletcher, you're a bit faster this go-around. Well, nothing a little stasis can't fix. And pull the lever, and escape. Oh, hello. But before we leave the mining sector of this ship, remember all those officer rigs we've been collecting? We can finally get a return on that investment. Ta-da! Flamethrower upgrade number two. Turns out, the new upgrade not only gives me a whole slew of the usual bonuses, but it also greatly increases my ammo capacity. Can't say no to that. I stopped to collect more officer rigs. I'm no longer sure if I need them, but I'm already here. Stopped to watch some deleted scenes from Mad Max Fury Road. I, I mean, I think that's what I'm watching? He, he did the Cult of the V8 hand thing, but there's no cars or people named Max, so I'm kind of a bit confused. Then went about my daily routine of fixing everything for everyone. You're the engineer, Isaac. What do you mean you don't know everything about every ship ever made, Isaac? Didn't they teach you nuclear physics in school, Isaac? Whew. There. It took 25 minutes, several confused searches around the room, and two deep cleans of my helmet after getting a bit too nauseous from flying around, but it's finally done. Comms are back online. And would you look at that? It's Spawn! And he's here to rescue us. Did you hear that, Jerry? We're gonna be rescued by Keith David. Tall man! Tall man! Whew! I got him, Jer. Jer? Uh, hey, look, a distraction. You like capitalism, right? Everyone likes capitalism. In any case, while we're receiving the messages from outside, we can't send any messages back. Must be something on the antenna. Ah, yep, that'll do it. Nothing a little elbow grease, engineering know-how, and automated asteroid cannons can't fix. There we are. Two down, one to go. Eh, uh, what are those things? Well, whatever they are, they're in my way. I just need to get to that third ca- Oh my god, would you shut up, Isaac? Honestly, you've got a whole two seconds of air left. You're fine. Jeez. All right, last one. I've got the shell removed. Now I just need to get to the underbelly. Well, that's a slight problem. Ah! Okay, fine. We'll just play hot potato then. I'm an engineer. I solve problems. And with the Leviathan out of the way, now Spawn can join us. He's coming in awfully fast. Oh, God, hit the deck. Well, we better go check on Keith. Probably just trying to drive with his mask on again. Keith? Is that you? I don't think that was Keith. Oh, it's the soldier necromorphs. Thanks, I hate it. But there is good news. The flamethrower automatically explodes the stasis packs on their back when you set them on fire, which means all that rapid movement they have turns into a crawl, which lets you roast them nice and easy. All right, what else did Keith bring me? Is, is that a nuke? Oh, and look what we have here, a splody boy. Perfect placement, right next to the nuke. Thank you, Dead Space. Thankfully, the flamethrower burns their bodies, but doesn't set off their explosive hands. So no issues there. I should get rid of this thing, though. Wouldn't want to accidentally set it on fire and kill everything in a 150 mile radius. You know, I think I might have made a mistake. Huh, no sign of Keith David, but it does look like Chen was here. And after making my way through a room that would make the Firebomb Academy proud, I find Hammond. He's a little confused, but he means well. Oh crap, look out Hammond, it's Chen, and he's happy to see you. No, oh, don't look at me, you need to dodge Chen's hugs. I mean, I did warn you he was happy. Well, while Hammond and Chen hug it out over there, I've got to get some things so the rest of us can leave this awful place. I grab the Singularity Core, then sprint my way off the ship, dropping firewalls behind me as I go to keep the locals entertained. Oh my god, I'm gonna live! <laughs> yeah, my non-existent spleen! <sighs> Ugh, I'm getting too old for this. I don't think my spine can take two more games. Let's skip forward a bit. I fight a boatload of enemies, all with relative ease, make my way to the crew's living quarters, who, surprise, surprise, need my help cleaning up the place. Honestly, whoever came up with space furniture Jenga deserves a court-martial. Make a quick detour back to the captain's nest so I can make my master key, since I kind of forgot to do that in all the excitement. Finally find the marker in all its glowing red glory. Buy the last suit upgrade I'll be getting this run. 
do some more shoot the big glowing weak spot puzzle solving in the captain's quarters, find a very elaborate diorama of the marker, A plus work, full marks, get a sneak peek at the final boss of the game, <laughs> boy isn't that gonna be fun, then use my master key to get the final upgrade to the flamethrower. Almost done now, nearly there. Unfortunately, all the upgrades in the world aren't enough to kill the regenerator, and we'll need to deal with him before we can move the marker off of the Ishimura. Thankfully, I just so happen to have an even bigger flamethrower nearby, and it does the trick just fine. So with that done, we can, ah, shit. Argent metal activated. Wait, what? I didn't ask for that. Stop, no, cancel, volume down, turn off. I just want, Ugh. All right, that's it. You wanna get Argent metal? Fine, let's get Argent metal. Okay, let's finish this. I finished upgrading the flamethrower, including its special third ability, which makes my flames reach even farther than before, pump the rest of my remaining nodes into my suit for good measure, do some final movement puzzles to get the marker on board, get a lore dump from Daniels, which I will not spoil for you, do some engineering magic, which forces her ship back into the hangar so I can return the marker to the planet instead of letting her take it back to EarthGov, fly down to the planet with my quasi-imaginary girlfriend, then begin the final push to move the marker back to its pedestal. Only a little bit longer to go. Is, uh, is anyone else getting some real Majora's Mask vibes right now? Burninate all the necromorphs, solve the last of the puzzles, and finally, finally, return the marker to its proper place. And with that, we've done it. We've finally completed our mission, and even have a way to get home with the little ship we've repaired. You know, I was starting to get worried for a second. With the way the original Dead Space ended, I thought we might be in for- Ah! It's so loud! What is this? This isn't how I remember it! This isn't how it's supposed to end! All right, that's enough nonsense. Time to get off this rock. Oh, good. Daniels, you made it too. Hey, do you happen to have the keys to the... Uh, why does everything always hit me in the face? Good idea, Daniels. You start the engine. I'll stay here. You know, with the falling rocks. Oh, hey, I saw a video of that guy earlier. Don't worry, I think he's friendly. Oops. Never mind. Well, with Argent Metal blaring and the game pulling out all the stops, it's time. Time to finally finish the game and beat the final boss, the hive mind of Aegis 7. There's just one tiny problem. I can't hit it. No matter how hard I hug the railing, no matter how close the hive mind gets in between attacks, and despite the increased range upgrade I got earlier, nothing. Not a single tick of damage. I tried using the secondary fire, hoping it would be like the original dead space and the extra range would carry me through, but unfortunately, that's not the case. This time around, the secondary fire's damage comes from the firewall, not the round itself. And after trying to burn the hive mind's tentacles and fruitlessly throwing random trash at the weak spots, I accepted defeat. You cannot, in fact, beat Dead Space 2023 with just a flamethrower. No matter how many upgrades you have, no matter how much fire runs through your veins, it simply can't be done. But we can't let the hive mind think it's gotten the best of us, because though it may have beaten my flames, it forgot one thing. Capitalism always wins.